time for Spiritual Perspective. Today we're dealing with some issues, highlights of the Holy Spirit. And I pray your heart is going to be mightily blessed of the Lord today. We're going to deal with some things because the Holy Spirit is vital in your life and mine. And you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Now friend, listen. Your life today can have meaning, purpose, and today the power of God can reside on you, in you, and through you. And it's all done by the power of the Holy Spirit today that you, when you ask Jesus into your heart and your life, you received and the Spirit of God came into you. And oh, what a difference he makes. Well, hello everybody. Welcome today to Spiritual Perspective. I'm Carlton Duck. It is a joy to be with you on the program, and I really pray your heart is going to be blessed of the Lord in a mighty and glorious way today. We're going to be dealing with highlights of the Holy Spirit. We're going to be dealing with some issues pertaining to the importance, the power, and how the Holy Spirit can work in your life and mine. And upon salvation, when He comes in and takes His abode in us today, I'm glad that He seals us. I'm glad He's a part of our lives. He brings conviction. He brings correction. He brings commitment. He brings goodness. He brings blessings to us. It is an awesome thing that God will do in your life through the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about that in a few moments. But again, I want to remind you, as I do with each program, about coming and being a part of what God's doing here at Gethsemane. We are certainly thankful to the fact that we still can have our doors open. And a major part of that is that we take serious what's going on in our world and in our communities and uh, that we are doing everything to do that we can do to protect your life and to keep you well. And that means intensified cleaning. That means we, we of course, do cold water fogging. We clean our church thoroughly several times in between, before, after services. And it's important because we want you healthy. And you can have that assurance when you come to Gethsemane that happens. We do air hugs. Yeah, that's right, air hugs. And, of course, we try to practice the social distancing and take all the precautions. This Sunday at 9.30 and 11.30 a.m. is a great time for you to come bring your family, kitty care kit for the youngsters, that's teens and right below all ages, and they will love it. And the kids are charged up and excited. In addition to that, we have what we call incentive programs that we different, do different things. They have just started a new one that, uh, that, that's really awesome. We just run them for several weeks and that really keeps their interest, and they get rewarded through these incentives that they participate in. And your kids can do the same thing. And that's all right in the sanctuary. You know, right now we're not doing children's church, and we're not doing Sunday school programs and all the other things. Right now, 9.30 and 11.30 a.m., but we do a lot in those services in an hour and ten minutes. So come and join with us. We'd love to see you. We're not hard to find. One block off of Route 221, that is Lakeside Drive here in the heart of Lynchburg, uh, Blue Ridge Street is located off of Lakeside, which uh, right across the street from a a restaurant called JoJo's Pizza. I had to try to think here how we were and where we are. JoJo's Pizza is right on Lakeside Drive, and Blue Ridge Street is right across from that one one block up, and there you are, near the main entrance to the University of Lynchburg. Please join me, and here's a great, great way for you to get to our YouTube and get to also... Not only our YouTube, but to get to our uh, website and Facebook is to go on our website, alive, A-L-I-V-E-G-B-C dot com. It'll appear there on the screen. Please click on and you can go searching and get information, encouragement, and a lot of blessings there on that site. In addition, you can also uh, enjoy our Facebook page by going to that. You don't have to try to find it. That's the easiest way to get to it. So all that said today... Uh, I just want to say thank you for tuning in, and I pray your heart will be mightily blessed. And please come see us at Gethsemane Baptist Church. Well, I want you to remember something today. Everything God does in your life is accomplished through the direct action of the Holy Spirit. Now, we we hear the term Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, same person. It's the third person in the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So therefore, it's one God, three persons. Jesus said in John 14 and 16, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. 
Now, from the Greek word, another means one just like me. So when you recall back that Jesus, after his crucifixion, after his resurrection, 40 days later, he ascended. And we are reminded that, of course, he went back and took his rightful seat at the right hand of the Father, didn't he? But he also said, I will send you another comforter, as I just read to you there in the book of John, that another comforter is the Holy Spirit who today brings conviction and shows us the need of salvation. You remember, you remember when you got saved? You felt that heaviness? You felt your sin? You felt you had rejected Jesus and all the things that went with that? And you cried out for the mercy of the Lord? And the grace of God came and saved your soul? And then one took up his possession? And then if you do something you shouldn't do, there's a convicting power? That's the Holy Spirit. There's one that gives you strength. That's the Holy Spirit. There's one that gives you direction. That's the Holy Spirit. There's one that blesses you. That's the Holy Spirit. So Jesus speaks and is saying, I'm going to send you one just like me. And so he had to be because he was equal with God as the Holy Spirit is. He works like me, Jesus was saying. He has motives like me, the Lord was saying. He expresses himself like me. He teaches like me. He does what I do. The Holy Spirit is an exact replica of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we also uh, determine, we can determine two things here when we're dealing with this process. One, the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is God. And secondly, the Holy Spirit today possesses the qualities of God. So not only is the Holy Spirit God, but he also expresses the qualities of God in bringing things to our heart and our life. So people say today, I wish Jesus was here. I wish Jesus would come down. Jesus is here. He is here today. There's one just like him called the Holy Spirit. And he's there to encourage you, to direct you, to convict you, to correct you, to bless you. Oh, listen today. What we need to do is a basic twofold application. One, we need to recognize him and know today that he's a part of us. Listen, he just doesn't move in and out. He's a part of you and your life always until you go to be with the Lord. And secondly, today we need to operate with him today and cooperate with him. In order for you to operate with him, you have to cooperate with him, right? So therefore today, you've got to let him direct your paths and keep you in his perfect will and accomplish what he has for you today. Note what Jesus said about him, that he would abide with us forever. Hallelujah. And I'm glad that he does. You know, further, Jesus said the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Now, we know what truth does. Jesus talked about truth. He said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? Make you free. And so the Holy Spirit will not operate in something today that is not truth. He operates through the power of the Word of God to bring that to us, to point out the things that needs improving in our lives, the things that needs repenting of, the things that we're blessed with. I mean, today He reveals all things to us today, and that's why it's important today that we walk honestly and in truth and with integrity with Him today. So it's futile for us today to expect God to help us if we today are living a lie. You cannot have the power and the presence of God in your life if you're living a lie. The Holy Spirit only operates in the arena of what we know as truth. And the truth is the only liberating factor today that can set you free. John 14, 17. Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you today. Well, the question is, that we have to come to, a couple of them, several of them, one, do you know him? The only way that you can know him is through the conviction that he brings, and the conversion that he brings. You, you've got to today yield to the fact that when he brings conviction, he expects you to be converted. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. You only come to him. Listen, we repent and we receive. And therefore, today we become a child of God. Do you know when he speaks to you today? Well, I, I don't know how the Holy Spirit can speak to me. Well, one of the more vital ways that 
He will speak to you is through the Word of God. And well, preacher, I'll never read it. So you are cutting him off in your life then, aren't you? That he can't speak to you. He will speak to you if you will open your heart and receive his word. He can speak to you through your circumstances. He can speak to you through the message of God's word that the pastor preaches. He can speak to you through conviction. He can speak to you through circumstances. He can speak to you through other people. There are various ways in which he can speak, but you have got to be in tune with him so you are listening that you can heed the call when he's speaking to you. Do you recognize him when he's guiding you today? Well, I think I'm going to do this. Is God in it? Do you have peace about it? The Lord will guide you today, but you've got to cooperate with his guidance system. And the greatest way that we know the guidance system of God is a twofold way. One, in the word. Second, in prayer. You've got to do those two things today. And then are you listening when he whispers? It's hard for God to speak to you when you don't pray. And therefore, you've got to be then a prayer warrior today. And are you sensitive today to the direction that he is leading you in? God wants to lead you through the Spirit of God, but if you're not cooperating, you're just sitting on an in-place uh, bike or something and pedaling yourself to death in life, but not going anywhere. You don't have to do that spiritually. He will guide you. He will bring you into the blessings. He will show you. He will reveal to you today. Jesus states, we, we will know him, but my question is, do we really know him? We can know him, but we make a choice whether we know and follow him today. Too many Christians miss him. Why? Because we're not paying attention. We've got our attention on what's going on in Washington. We've got our attention on what's going on around the world. We've got our attention on what somebody else is doing. We've got our attention on everything but God. We've got our attention absorbed with sports. We've got our, I mean, listen, I'm not saying today it's wrong today to be up on current events and to be there with your friends and family and things. All those are fine in the right place. And there's nothing wrong with even watching the news some. But my Lord, all the time, really? No wonder you're so depressed. That'll do it to you. The thing is today, you know him today, and you know him by paying attention to him today. We've got to know him. And the Bible says, for as many that are, that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, Romans 8 and 14. So it's important for children, the children of God today to be led by the Spirit of God. And listen, he, he won't drive you. He today will lead you. But you've got to cooperate with what he's trying to do in your life and mine today. We as the children of God should be today good at following the leadership of the Spirit of God. And a lot of Christians do not do that. The Holy Spirit wants to be involved in their daily life, but they keep slamming the door right in his face today. Everything that God does in your life is accompanied by the direct action of the Holy Spirit. Well, I don't understand why I'm going through all these pains and problems in life and why we're going through all this mess of pandemic and all the craziness of this world. You remember this. God's in control, not you, not me, not whoever's in the White House. Let me tell you, the only one that's in control is God. And we've got to put our reliance and today our assurance in Him. And so today, God the Father is the one that is on the throne. Jesus is at His right hand. And understand this today, that everything that's done on earth, it's done through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And He will lead us today in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. So the Holy Spirit is God on earth working working on us, working through us, and working for us. Don't forget that. So the Holy Spirit possesses these qualities of God. I jot it down a few. Let me just reel them off to you. One, He is life. He is truth. He is love. He is holy. He is eternal. He is omnipresent. He is omnipotent. That means He's all-powerful. He's omniscient. That means He has all wisdom and knows all things. So the Holy Spirit is God and possesses the qualities of God, and at the new birth, then we're born into the family of God, that the Holy Spirit then can guide, direct us, and lead us in the paths of righteousness that he desires to bring us to and bring us through today. So realize this today. You've got to be born first and know Christ as your personal Savior. That's what, exactly what Jesus was talking about there in John chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. And there we see, he talked to Nicodemus, and Jesus answered and said unto him, 
Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water, that's the word, and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So therefore, today, the word of God is sure, steadfast, and unmovable, and it's our anchor, and it brings us to the reality today and telling us what we are, that we're sinners in need of a Savior, and then the Holy Spirit brings the conviction, we cry out for the mercies of the Lord, and we ask for God's forgiveness, and we're born again, and then today we can experience then the benefits of being taught of the Spirit of God. But you've got to listen to what the Spirit of God is trying to teach you and show you today, and sometimes we have to go through the troubled waters. We may be cast down, but we're not destroyed. Let me tell you today, we go through, and that's a part of life. No one exempt is exempt from it. It rains on the just and the unjust. But understand this, it's God who is our refuge and strength and a very present help in time of trouble. God said, I'm going, I'm going to put a new spirit within you. And understand, God then prophesied this 400 years about Nicodemus, and God was saying, this is there's coming a day that he would place his spirit in us. And he has, and he will. But you've got to yield to that spirit today. God's spirit within us will do something. You know what it does? It causes a radical change in your life. It makes you a child of God, and it changes your direction. It changes your desires. It changes everything about you, and it works mightily in your life that you then can seek the Lord and understand what he is trying to do in your life. But considering that the Spirit of God is the person of the Holy Spirit, then he has radically then changed us. What happens that causes us to let this radical change then diminish? Because you were changed. That's why he was saying, as I quoted to you a moment ago, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that we're new creatures, new creations in Christ. But then after salvation, understand God starts changing us. Yes, we become children of God, but he wants to do more than just make us his children. He now wants to work in our lives. And keep this in mind, God's transformed us today, but he creates the environment that will draw us today to lose our desire for the world and have a hunger and a desire for him to work in our lives. This thing of being born again is not a part-time relationship. It's just not when you go to church, and some of you haven't been to church in a long time, and so therefore, have you lost your salvation? No. But I'm going to tell you something, friends. Be careful that you keep in a tight relationship with God, that you seek him every day, that you read his word, that you call upon him in prayer. So our problem is we see salvation as a religion, and it's not a religion. Religion will not get you to heaven. Religion is man's way to God. Relationship is God's way that you've got to come in relationship and know him in the free pardon of your sin and know him as your personal savior. Then you can know God as your father, Jesus as your savior, and then you can understand the Holy Spirit then is walking with you today. Romans 8 and 9 says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. So if ye be that so if so that so if so be that spirit, sorry, dwell in you now. If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So we have become new because today God's Spirit then has has taken up his abode, his dwelling place, and he lives within us today. Here's something that we need to do. You need to train yourself today to be sensitive to the leadership of the Spirit of God and let Him direct and lead in your life. How do we get ourselves to be able to hear the Spirit of God and to obey and to follow His direction and to be led of the Spirit and cooperate with the work of the Spirit of God that lives inside of us? The Holy Spirit, one, is God. And he knows you. He knows everything about you. He knows about your tomorrow. He knows about your next year. He knows about your next breath. He knows every detail of your life. He even has the hairs on your head numbered. He knows the thoughts and the intents of your heart. He knows every thought that channels through your mind. He knows every word that wells up within your mouth. He knows everything. The Bible says to God then, 
He today knows everything about us. So if that's the case, don't you think we need today to start letting God work in us today so that we, our lives can be a reflection of his glory, honor, and praise? That's the work of the Spirit of God in us today. So the Bible says God will, will withhold no good thing from us who love him. Psalm 84 and verse 11. If we don't learn to work with him, if we don't learn to listen to him, and be sensitive to him, you're going to miss it. You're going to miss what God wants to do in your life. How many times have you missed what the Holy Spirit is trying to speak to your heart and to, to direct your life to do? Proverbs 20, Proverbs 20 and 27, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. He tells us to let our light so shine before men that they'll see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven, meaning that the light of the Lord today works in us by the Spirit of God. Proverbs 20 and 27 says, searching all the inward parts of the belly. So this is a checkpoint that God then places within you and I today that through the Holy Spirit we say today, I have a, here's what he says. He says, we can say, I have a feeling today that I need to follow the Lord. I need to follow what he desires. There's a checkpoint. See, when you're doing wrong, there's a checkpoint. When you're not living right, there's a checkpoint. When you're not serving God, there's a checkpoint. What is it called? Conviction. And therefore, you've got today to repent and get your heart right with God and serve the Lord and put Him first in your life today. So important that we today seek the Lord while He may be found. We're asking others, what do you think? What should I do? I'm not sure about this. Why don't you ask God? Why don't you let him direct your paths rather than following the leadership of man because we all are failures in one sense of the speaking. I'm sorry, but we have all missed the mark, as the Word of God tells us. There's only one today that has all the answers, and that's the Lord, and we need to seek him through the power of the third person, the Spirit, and the Holy Spirit of God. So here's our problems as Christians. We fail to listen, and we fail to take heed to the Holy Spirit's leading. Why don't you start today saying, Holy Spirit, I'm going to start I'm going to start checking with you on everything. That's what you really need to do. That's the power of your prayer life. You seek the Lord while he may be found. You seek him in the decisions that you make. You just don't spin off and do things. Think, oh, well, whatever. That's not the attitude of a Christian. The attitude of a Christian is that we seek the Lord and we serve him and we live for him and we're sold out to him. So we do that today. Listen, You've got to learn to listen to God and give him time to speak. That's why I tell people when they come to altars of prayer, I say, don't just get at, at that altar and pour everything in your life out to God. Pause, be still, and know that he is God. And permit God to speak to you. He'll speak to you in prayer, through the word, and there are many other ways that he can speak to you, as we've already talked about. Friend, it's important today that we let the Spirit of God direct, lead, and guide our lives. And I pray that you're doing that. And if not, start today. Let the Holy Spirit be the Holy Spirit of your life to direct, to control, and to show you the path of righteousness that he has for you. And today, he will bless you beyond measure. He will well up within you. He will give you joy unspeakable. He will encourage your heart. He will today bless you mightily. He will put today the joy bells of heaven just ringing in your soul. Even amidst all the troubles of this world, you can still have the joy of the Lord. And Nehemiah said, the joy of the Lord is our strength. That's what the Holy Spirit will do in your life if you today will open your life to let him do it. Thank you today for tuning in to Spiritual Perspective. And today, I pray that you will heed what God's Word has told us today. Train your spirit to listen to the Holy Spirit. And God will make your life a blessing and a success. I promise you that on the authority of God's Word. Worship with us this Sunday, 9, 30, and 11, 30 a.m. Gethsemane Baptist Church, Kitty Care Kids, for every kid that comes in the church. And they have church, and they have Kitty Care Kids right there in the pew. And it's awesome. We have the incentive program that we've started that has been just a real powerhouse of blessings for the kids and the teens. And that's all available. All you've got to do is come. The worship is awesome. Brother Tom, our worship leader, does a superb job on the music, connecting it to the message. And then the message of God's Word will challenge and encourage your heart. This Sunday, 9.30 and 11.30, Kitty Care Kids, 
Where are you located, Pastor? 411 Blue Ridge Street, right here in the heart of Lynchburg, one block off of Lakeside Drive. That's Route 221, uh, Lakeside Drive. And then if, when you get to Blue Ridge, it's right across the street from JoJo's Pizza and near the main entrance to the University of Lynchburg. We would love to see you, and you'll be blessed. And we've got a gift for you if you come. I promise you that, and you'll be, get blessed by it. It's a great privilege to bring you the Word of God. It's also a great privilege to use other media sources, television, a live TV, also the Internet, uh, Facebook, and all that's accessible today. You can get a live TV and watch us on this channel, which belongs and is owned by us and managed by us, but ultimately belongs to God. We're just managers of what God has placed in our hands. And then you can go to AliveGBC.com. From that site, you can go to my Facebook page, which is chock full of information every day, and that is Carlton Duck. But you can go to it off of AliveGBC.com, and you can also go to uh, uh, YouTube and watch other programs that we're doing. So we're trying to minister and encourage and bless you. Be sure to take full advantage of those opportunities that God has placed before us today. And please come worship with us this Sunday. Again, thank you today for tuning in. I pray your heart's been challenged. Listen, get in the Word. Let the Spirit of God lead you, direct you, and watch God do a mighty work in your life. God bless you. Keep looking to Him. And we'll hope to see you soon at Gethsemane Baptist Church. See you. God bless you.